<clears throat> Aloha and welcome to Through the Bible in a Year. This is day 129 of our daily Bible readings. We are live here on Facebook and I thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Marshall, like you didn't already know that because you're watching this because you're on my friends list. So we're with Lions Roar Ministries based here on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. So thank you so much for joining me today. <coughs> Excuse me. Our Bible reading plan that we've been using and are continuing to use is from the International Bible Society and you can find it at biblica.com forward slash resources forward slash reading dash plans. You get over there, check them out. And uh, our Bible text that we're putting up on the screen is courtesy of biblegateway.com. I love them. I, I use them all the time and they've got all kinds of study tools and, and all kinds of things that you can use uh, for prepping for Bible studies or uh, for your personal time or if you're uh, like me sometimes preparing for a sermon that is so fast, so quick and everything. Get over there, check them out, BibleGateway.com. Um, and if I could get you to do me a favor, if I could get you to like and share this video, all the thumbs up and hearts that you can do if you're watching on your mobile device, that you can do alerts, uh, the Facebook algorithms that, hey, somebody, you know, this is an important video and um, more than likely it'll show up on somebody's uh, timeline that's not even on my friend list or not even on your friend list. It'll just show up. And I did find out yesterday, and I do want to apologize that the link that I had put on in the description for our YouTube channel uh, was incorrect, and so I have changed that. The one that's in our in the description of this video today does go to our YouTube channel. You can click that link, go over there, subscribe. Make sure you click the bell button because that way, whenever we upload new content or go live on our YouTube channel, you will know and you'll be notified and will be able to join us if you so choose or come back and check us out later so all right now that we got that business out of the way let's check out what we are reading for today we are in the book of judges we're going to be reading chapter 9 today and then uh, in the book of john oh, one of my favorite passages chapter 6 starting verse 124 and if you don't know the beginning in chapter 6, that's the feeding of the 5,000. I love that story. And in Psalm 58, we're going to wrap everything up with today. So if you are ready, uh, let's get going for today. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your love and your mercy for us, how that you take care of us and provide for us everything that we need. God, even the things that we don't need or don't know that we need, you've already supplied and because your word says that you do over abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. And you know you created us. Some of us got pretty, uh, pretty expressive imaginations, pretty active imaginations. So, God, I thank you that you do more than what we can even imagine. Lord, I thank you for your word. And I pray that as we read your word today that you will show us your word through your eyes. Open the eyes of our understanding and help us to see what you would have us to see and help us to learn what you would have us to learn today. And God, we just give you glory. We give you honor and praise in the name of your son, Yeshua. Amen and amen. All right, let's get started now. As I've said before, I am reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, but you can follow along with the whatever version of the Bible that you would like, whatever is more comfortable for you. That is just fine. As long as you're getting the Word of God, that's the important thing. Because as my dad always says, the more you get into the Word, the more the Word gets into you. So that's the important thing right there. All right, here we go. Judges chapter 9. Then Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabel, went to Shechem, to his mother's brothers, and spoke with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Please speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem. Which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jerubbabel reign over you, or that one reign over you? Remember that I am your own flesh and blood or f flesh and bone 
And his mother's brothers spoke all these words concerning him in the hearing of all the men of Shechem. And their hearts was inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. So they gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of baal Bareth, which, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless men, and they followed him. Then he went to his father's house in Ophrah and killed his brothers, the seventy sons of Jerubbabel, on one stone. Okay. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left because he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together all of Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king beside the terebinth tree at the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim and lifted his voice and cried out and said to them, <coughs> Excuse me, listen to me, you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went forth to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, I should cease giving my oil, with which they honor God and men, and go away and stay and sway over the trees. Then the trees said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Should I cease my sweetness and my good fruit to go sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, you come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Should I cease my new wine, which cheers both God and men, and go sway over the trees? And all, then all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in truth you anoint me as king over you, then come and take shelter in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Therefore you have acted in truth and sincerity in making Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Jerubbabel and his house, and have done to him as he deserves, for my father fought for you, risked his life, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian, but you have risen up against my father's house this day, and killed his seventy sons on one stone, and made Abimelech the son of his female servant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If then you have acted in truth and sincerity with Jerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem, Shechem and Beth Milo. And let fire come from the men of Shechem and from Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled. And he went to Be'er and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. After Abimelech had reigned over Israel three years, God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the crime done to the seventy sons of Jerubbabel might be settled and their blood laid on Abimelech their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem who aided him in the killing of his brothers. And the men of Shechem set men in ambush against him on the tops of mountains, and they robbed all who passed by them along that way, and it was told to Abimelech. Now Gaal, the son of Ebed, came with his brothers and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. So they went out into the fields and gathered grapes from their vineyards and trod them and made merry. And they went into the house of their god and ate and drank and cursed Abimelech. Then Gaal, son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech and who is Shechem that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jerubbabel? Is he not Zuel? Or, and is not Zabel his, off, his officer? 
serve the men of Hamor, the father of Shechem. By, but why should we serve him? If only this people were under my authority, then I would remove Abimelech. So he said to Abimelech, Increase your army and come out. Then Zabel, the ruler of the city, heard these words of Gaal, son of Ebed. His anger was aroused, or when he heard it. And he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly, saying, Take note, Gaal, the son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to Shechem, and, they, and here they are fortifying the city against you. Now therefore get up by night, you and the people who are with you, and lie in wait in the field. And let it be as soon as the sun is up in the morning that you shall rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may then do to them as you find opportunity. So Abimelech and all the people who were with him rose by night and lay in wait against Shechem in four companies. When Gaal the son of Ebed went out and stood in the entrance of the city gate, Abimelech and all the people who were with him rose from lying in wait. And when Gaal saw the people, he said to Zabel, Look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. But Zabel said to him, You see the shadows of the mountains as if they were men. So Gaal spoke again and said, See, people are coming down from the center of the land. Another company is coming from the diviner's terebinth tree. Then Zabel said to him, Where indeed is your mouth now, with which you said, Who is Abimelech, and that we should serve him? Are not these the people whom you despised? Go out, if you will, and fight with them. So Gaal went out, leading the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled from him, and fell wounded to the very entrance of the gate. Then Abimelech dwelt in Aramoth, or Aramah, and Zabel drove out, drove out Gaal and his brothers, so that they would not dwell in Shechem. And it came about on the next day, that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. So he took his people, divided them into three companies, and lay in wait in the field. And he looked, and there were people where the and there were the people coming out of the city, and he rose against them and attacked them. Then Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city, and the two other companies rushed upon all who were in the fields and killed them. So Abimelech fought against the city all that day. He took the city and killed the people who were in it, and he demolished the city and sowed it with salt. Now when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that, they entered the stronghold of the temple of the god Bereth. And it was told to Abimelech that all the men of the, of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. Then Abimelech went up to Mount Zalmon, he and all the people who were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder. Then he said to the people who were with him, what you have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. So each of the people likewise cut down his own bow and followed Abimelech, put them against the stronghold and set the stronghold on fire above them so that all the people of the tower of Shechem died, about a thousand men and women. Then Abimelech went to Thebes, and he encamped against Thebes and took it. But there was a strong tower in the city, and all the men and women, all the people of the city, fled there and shut themselves in. Then they went to the top of the tower. So Abimelech came as far as the tower and fought against it, and he drew near the door of the tower to burn it with fire. But a certain woman dropped an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Then he called quickly to the young men, the armor-bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me lest men say of me, a woman killed him. So the young man thrust through, thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man to his place.
God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father by killing his seventy brothers. And all the evil of the men of Shechem God returned on their own head, and on them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbabel. Interesting story. All right, we're going to continue now. John chapter 6, verse 1 through 24. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him, because he, they saw his signs which he performed on all those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. And Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But he had said, but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them should have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so, he, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered up them, or they gathered them up, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign Jesus did, said, This truly is the prophet who has come into the world. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed to the mountain by himself alone. Now when the evening came, his disciples went to, down to the sea, got into a boat, and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing, so when they were rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into a boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no boat there except the one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but the disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats had come from Tiberias, near the place where they had ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. All right, we are going to wrap up today with reading Psalm chapter 58. Do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? No, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are deaf like cobra, or like the or they are like the deaf cobra that stops its ear, which will not heed the voice of charmers, charming ever so skillfully. Break their teeth in their mouth, O God. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O Lord. Let them flow away as waters which run continually when he bends his bow. 
Let his arrows be as if cut in pieces. Let them be like a snail which melts away as it goes, like a stillborn child of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, as in his living and burning wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges the earth. And that is where we are wrapping everything up for today. I thank you so much for joining me today, whether you're watching me live or you are watching the replay on our broadcast for today. Our Bible reading plan that we are using, once again, is from the International Bible Society. And you can find it at Biblica.com forward slash resources forward slash reading dash plans. Get over there. Check them out. And our Bible text that we just had on the screen is courtesy of BibleGateway.com and I appreciate them for allowing me to use their website to put our scripture up on the screen every day. And if you could do me a favor, like and share this video and click the link in our description. Go over to our YouTube channel, click and subscribe there and then make sure you click the bell because that way anytime we upload new content uh, or go live on our YouTube channel, which we will be doing, um, you will be notified so you won't miss out on anything. So that is going to wrap everything up for today. This has been day 129 of Through the Bible in a Year. Tomorrow going to be 130 of Through the Bible in a Year and you don't want to miss that. So I just want to say before I sign off, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you his shalom, that's his peace, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah. Amen and amen. All right, have a great rest of the day wherever you are, and we will see you again here tomorrow for day 130 of Through the Bible in a Year. Aloha.